a new chapter under the unit plant physiology and the name of this chapter is mineral nutrition. In this chapter we are going to study about the minerals. Minerals are classified into two main types based on the amount in which they are required by the plant body and it is classified into two main types they are macro elements and micro elements. Macro elements are the elements which are required in a large amount by the plant body and micro elements are the elements or the minerals which are required in a less quantity or in a less amount by the plants. Let us see the number of elements which are included as uh, macro elements means which are required in the large amount by the plant. So the elements which are included as macro elements are carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, potassium, sulfur, phosphorus and calcium, magnesium. So these nine elements are considered as macro elements and micro elements include iron, molybdenum, zinc, boron, copper, manganese, nickel and chloride ions. These eight elements are considered as micro elements which are required in a lesser quantity or in the lesser amount by the plants. Now these elements when we add up the macro and the micro elements it shows in total the 17 elements. So these 17 elements are called as essential elements. These elements are termed as essential elements. So these 17 elements are called as essential elements because these elements are required in the biomolecular reaction so as they help in the formation of structural molecules and also these essential elements involve in the production of energy molecule that is in the synthesis of ATP. So these essential elements also helps in the synthesis of ATP so as to carry out the active processes in the plants and these elements able to activate or they can also inhibit the enzymatic actions and here we can take an example of molybdenum element. This essential element activates the enzyme nitrogenase which helps in carrying out the process nitrogen fixation. Now let us learn about the criteria for essentiality of these elements. What are the conditions by which these elements are considered as essential elements? So these conditions by which we can explain that these elements were considered as essential elements is given by the two scientists named Arnon and Stout in the year 1939. They have shown some conditions by which these elements can be considered as essential elements. Now when do we say that these elements are considered as essential elements which are essential in the plant body is required to carry out the process reproduction and also in the normal growth of the plant body. As they are required to carry out the reproduction and also in the normal growth of the plant body. So in the absence of these essential elements the reproduction and the normal growth cannot be carried out in the plant. And the next condition by which we can term these elements as essential includes required in ATP production. These elements helps as I said you before that these elements helps in the synthesis of ATP. As they are involving in the production of ATP molecule they were considered as essential. And the elements can be considered as essential only when their requirement is not replaceable. That means they should be specific in amount present in the plants. Requirement should not be replaceable of these elements then they can be considered as essential. And the next condition is deficiency of that particular elements should not be supplemented by the other elements. And the last conditions by which we can term these elements as essential elements is it should involve in carrying out the metabolic activities. These elements should help in carrying out the metabolism in the plant body. 
So, these are certain conditions by which these elements can be considered as essential elements. The conditions include they should be required in reproduction and in the normal growth. It should help in the synthesis of ATP molecule and these, uh, the requirement of these elements should not be replaceable and the deficiency of these elements should not be supplemented by the other elements and they should involve in the metabolic activities. We know that the soil contains water and minerals in it and that water is going to be absorbed through the root hairs and also the minerals which are present in the soil is also going to be absorbed through roots into the plant body. There are 17 minerals which are considered as essential but there are 60 plus minerals have been reported which will transport it or uh, which will go passively into the plant body. How can we conclude that these 17 elements are essential in the plant body? Uh, we came to know that these 17 elements are essential for the plants by a technique hydroponic. Hydroponic is a technique of growing plants in a nutrient medium without soil. So, this technique is used by a scientist named Sack and he showed that when the plant is uh, kept in a nutrient solution then by this experiment we came to know about the essentiality of the nutrients. So, this hydroponic technique is used to identify the essentiality. So, if we take a nutrient solution and we keep the plant in that and that nutrient solution do not contain one element out of these 17 minerals ok. So, if we see the deficiency symptoms in the plant body, so that deficiency symptoms is going to be recognized or is going to be observed due to the absence of this particular element. So, due to the missing of this particular element in the nutrient solution, we can conclude that this element is essential to cure that deficiency symptom which was observed in this technique. So, by this technique hydroponic, we can uh, grow the different kinds of plants like tomatoes, lettuce and strawberries and many more. This is the technique which is used to identify the essentiality and by this technique, we can also know about the deficiency which will cause due to the elements or the minerals present in the soil. Let us discuss the role of micro and macro elements. The first element which we are going to discuss is nitrogen. Uh, nitrogen is one of those elements which is required in the macro quantity in a plant body. Whenever we talk of the role of micro or the macro elements, we are going to discuss about the four things and they are uh, in which form this element is going to be absorbed and where this element is required, the functions of these element and the deficiency symptom of this element. So, the first is absorption. The nitrogen is the macro element which is absorbed in three different forms and that are the nitrogen is absorbed either as nitrates, nitrides or as ammonium salts. The next is requirement where this element is required. So, this nitrogen is required in meristematic cells. Meristematic cells are continuously dividing cells and also in the metabolically active cells which participates in carrying out the metabolic activities or in the process metabolism. Now, we are going to discuss about the functions of nitrogen. So, the nitrogen plays an important role or it is an important constituent of amino acids and it also helps in the protein synthesis because the protein is made up of amino acids. So, as it is a constituent of amino acid, it also helps in the synthesis of protein. The next function of nitrogen is it involves in the production of ATP that is an energy molecule. When we look at the structure of adenosine triphosphate that is uh, on the structure of ATP molecule, we can see the adenosine ring which is a nitrogen base. Therefore, the nitrogen 
is required in the production of ATP. The next function is it helps in the synthesis of nucleic acid. Nucleic acids include RNA and DNA and this genetic materials RNA and DNA is made up of nucleotides and that nucleotides shows nitrogen bears in its structure and therefore the nitrogen is required in the synthesis of this nucleic acids. It is essential in making up the chlorophyll molecule because when we look at the structure of chlorophyll molecule it is made up of a magnesium ion in the middle and that magnesium ion is attached by the four nitrogen molecule and hence the chlorophyll molecule uh, the, the making up of the chlorophyll molecule requires nitrogen element. So these are certain functions of the nitrogen and by seeing these functions we can easily predict the deficiency symptoms caused due to the deficiency of nitrogen or uh, due to the presence of less amount of the nitrogen in the plant body. So what are the deficiency symptoms? As the nitrogen is helping in the protein synthesis, if the nitrogen is not present or if it is not going to be available, then the protein synthesis stops. When the protein synthesis stops, the plasma membrane which is made up of proteins and lipids is going to be formed incomplete. It means the formation of that uh, plasma membrane is incomplete and due to the incomplete formation of the plasma membrane, we can see the stunted growth of the plant. And the next function of the nitrogen is in the production of ATP. If nitrogen is not present, then ATP synthesis is going to be affected. When ATP is not synthesized, no ATP synthesis. So when ATP uh, is not going to be synthesized, then the active processes inside the plant body is affected. Because the active processes require energy or it requires an energy molecule ATP. If ATP is not going to be synthesized, there will not be any active processes going to be take place or these processes will slow down. Now when uh, it is used in the synthesis of nucleic acid but if there will be no synthesis of nucleic acid due to the deficiency of nitrogen then again the cell division stops and we can see the stunted growth of the plant and as the nitrogen is helping in making up the chlorophyll molecule if the nitrogen is not available and due to the deficiency of the nitrogen, the chlorophyll molecule is not developed due to which we can see the yellowing of the leaves. The deficiency of the element nitrogen shows the yellowing of the leaves and this condition is termed as chlorosis which is observed only in the older leaves or in the lower leaves of the plants. One more deficiency symptom we can see due to the absence of nitrogen in the plants and that is the flowering is reduced. As the flowering is decreases in the plant, the fruiting or the production of fruits will also get decreases. The fruits will be produced in a small quantity. So these are the functions and the deficiency symptoms of the element nitrogen. Now let us discuss about the second element phosphorus. Phosphorus is also a macro element which is required in a large amount by the plants. Now this phosphorus is absorbed from the soil as phosphate ions HPO4-2, H2PO4-. So these are the phosphate ions which is absorbed by the plants from the soil. And this phosphorus element is required in meristematic tissues and again it is required in metabolically active cells. So we have seen the absorption how uh, in which form it is going to be absorbed and where it is required. Now let us move to the functions of phosphorus. So the phosphorus element is 
an important constituent of plasma membrane. As the plasma membrane is made up of proteins and phospholipids, we can see the phosphorus element binds to this lipid molecule in the structure of plasma membrane. So, in this way, uh, the phosphorus is an important constituent of plasma membrane. The next function is similar to that of the nitrogen. It is also used in ATP production. When we see the structure of adenosine triphosphate molecule, we can see the three phosphate bonds are present and the bond which is present between these two phosphates is breaking down in order to release the energy. So, the phosphorus also helps in the synthesis of ATP molecule. The next function of phosphorus is it is essential in the synthesis of RNA and DNA which are nucleic acids because these nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides and this nucleotide shows nitrogen base, pentose sugar, phosphoric acid. So in this way, the phosphorus is uh, essential in the synthesis of nucleic acids like RNA and DNA. The next function of phosphorus is in the activation of enzymes. It acts as the activator of certain enzymes to carry out the certain functions in the plants. Phosphorus is also required in the formation of coenzymes like NAD, FAD and FADH2. So, these are certain functions of the element phosphorus. Let us discuss the deficiency symptoms of phosphorus. In the absence of phosphorus, the chlorophyll cannot be synthesized. The pigment chlorophyll cannot be synthesized and due to this, we can see the yellowing of leaves takes place. So, this yellowing of leaves is called as chlorosis. So, the chlorosis is the deficiency symptom which can be seen in the plants due to the absence of phosphorus or due to the presence of lesser amount of the element phosphorus. The next deficiency symptom is as the phosphorus is required in the formation of plasma membrane that is in the synthesis of proteins, if these proteins would not get synthesized then the stunted growth can be seen in the plants. Uh, due to the absence of phosphorus or due to the deficiency of phosphorus, the enzymes like phosphokinase and phosphatase. So, these enzymes like phosphatase and phosphokinase is activated. Due to the activation of these enzymes, the breakdown reactions takes place in the plants. And uh, the deficiency symptom of phosphorus can also be seen in soya bean seeds. Uh, usually the protein is accumulated in the soya bean seeds. But due to the deficiency of phosphorus, the carbohydrate accumulation takes place in the soya bean instead of protein. Unusual because um, the soya bean usually shows the accumulation of proteins and it is very well known for proteins. So, this is also a deficiency symptom where we can see that the carbohydrate is accumulated in the soya bean seeds. So, these are certain deficiency symptoms which is due to the absence of element phosphorus. Thank you.